Jesus' battle here with Satan and his victory over Satan actually parallels another story earlier in the Bible that's familiar to all of us, and it's the story of David and Goliath. The story of David and Goliath. And that that story kind of reminds us of, again, this promise in Genesis 3. The promise in, in the garden was man has sinned, there's a curse in the world, there's death, but there's going to be a Savior who comes, is going to do battle with the evil one, and is going to crush his head, and is going to rescue humanity. That was the promise of God. And then God comes to David and says, through David is going to come the line of the Messiah. And this is what we see in the story of, of David and Goliath. David was anointed with the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit at his baptism. And then what does he do? He immediately goes out to fight against the giant who's wearing snake armor, the Bible tells us. And Jesus was baptized, the Spirit descends on him, and immediately, Matthew 4, he goes out into the wilderness to do battle with the serpent. And what does the Bible tell us about Goliath? Not only is he wearing snake armor, the Bible says he's presenting himself 40 days and 40 nights taunting the Israelite army. Just as after those 40 days and 40 nights, the, the serpent comes out to do battle with Jesus. And what happens? David goes out, crushes the head of the giant, and rescues Israel. Now, the, the problem for us is not our familiarity with that story. We all know the story of David and Goliath. The, the problem for us is that we so often think that the point of the David and Goliath story is that we need to be brave like David and face down our giants, right? I remember one time at, at, a, at a, a youth camp, Somebody from another church, this, uh, it was an adult worker sitting beside uh, a student who's asking her questions about David and Goliath. And the, the adult worker said, well, the point of the, the David and Goliath story is it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. That sounds nice. It's cliche. That has nothing to do with the David and Goliath story. See, why is it that when we read the Old Testament, our automatic response is to identify with the hero in the story, right? But we want to identify with the king. Instead, what, what God wants us to do as we read 1 Samuel 17 is to identify with the Israelites who are cowering in fear and afraid to face Goliath and who are hoping that somebody will come through the ranks who can fight them, fight the Goliath for them and beat Goliath so that they don't have to. That, that's who we are. We're, we're the people in the background, scared to death and needing a champion to fight for us and save us. And that's what, exactly what happens with David. David is the one through whom is going to come the Messiah. David is anointed with the Spirit of God. And what does he do? He goes out, he crushes the head of the giant, and then he takes the head of the giant. And then what happens? After David has done for the Israelite army what they had refused to do, and David takes the head of Goliath, the Philistine army begins to run, and that's when the Israelite army gets up and goes after them. It's not until they've been rescued that they're ready to fight. And that's what Matthew wants you and me to understand about Matthew chapter 4, is that you're not here to, to follow in the example of Jesus. You need Jesus to save you. And then you can be empowered because then you'll receive the Spirit. And then you can wield the sword of the Spirit and fight off the temptation of the evil one. No. David did for the Israelites what they couldn't do for themselves while they stood back and watched. And Matthew 4 and Matthew 27 show us that Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He died in our place for our sins, crushed the head of the serpent while we stand back and watch and say, isn't God great? He comes to save us from our fear and slavery to Satan. Satan. 